Are you prepared for the end of fake money? What is money? Today we begin with a fundamental question, what is money? This, no doubt, is an important question. And we ask it with clear intent and purpose. Namely, we want to better understand how it's possible for America to rack up such a massive trade deficit with China. China U.S. imports and exports of goods. It has to be stressed that the most often cited figure is the trade deficit in goods, which is the scariest figure. The U.S. surplus in services with China has grown rapidly in recent years. It was $33 billion in 2015, doubling from $16.5 billion just four years earlier. By 2017 it had grown to $38.5 billion. The idea that a trade deficit is somehow bad is highly dubious. Countries do not trade with each other anyway, individuals and companies do, and they obviously do so because they deem it advantageous for both sides. Moreover, these aggregate statistics obscure more than they reveal. The global supply chain is extremely complex. A single $3 t-shirt made in China will contribute to the incomes of people in some 15 to 20 countries before a consumer in the U.S. plucks it off a shelf in Walmart. If we were to talk incessantly about the U.S. capital account surplus, which offsets the trade deficit, would anyone complain? P.T. America's trade deficit with China, in 2017 alone, was $375 billion. That's a gap of over $31 billion a month, or $1 billion a day. We believe having a better grasp on what money is will bring clarity to the nasty trade deficit that's motivating today's burgeoning trade war. With respect to our initial inquiry we turn to Victorian economist William Stanley Yavins for edification. In his 1875 work, Money and the Mechanism of Exchange, Yavin stated that money has four functions. It's a medium of exchange, a common measure of value, a standard of value, and a store of value. Many deficiencies with today's renditions of money, including the dollar, appear when applying these functions to the present system of floating exchange rates. With the exception of functioning as a medium of exchange, the dollar, like all of today's debt-based fiat currencies, comes up short in its function as a common measure of value, a standard of value, and a store of value. Hence, today's money is not real money. Rather, it's fake money. What's more, this fake money has ridiculous implications on how people earn, save, invest, and pay their way in the world we live in. Practically all aspects of everything have been disfigured by it. An image of the disfiguring U.S. broad money supply TMS2 since 1986. In early 2008 that stood at 5.3 trillion U.S. dollars, a decade later it has grown by more than 150 percent. Think about this for a moment, just the additional amount of money created in the U.S. economy in the past decade was 1.5 times greater than the amount of money created in all of U.S. history before 2008. It is impossible for the effects of this to be neutral in any shape or form. P.T. Follow the fake money The failings of today's fake money generally stem from the unsatisfactory reality that it is birthed from debt. Money is borrowed into existence seemingly without limits. On top of that, floating exchange rates, where the relationships between currencies are ever-changing, and money is continually eroded by monetary inflation make it wanting as a common measure of value, a standard of value, and a store of value. Take the dollar, for instance. Over the last 100 years, it has lost over 95% of its value. Yet, even with this poor performance, the dollar has one of the better track records going. In fact, many currencies that were around just a short century ago have vanished from the face of the earth. They have been debased to their actual value, that of fire kindling or toilet paper. One of the more glaring results of the insanity of central economic planning. Not surprisingly, 
Real economic growth has never again reached its pre-Fed heights, and has in fact declined decade after decade in the post-WW2 era. This money system is poisonous. It has transformed the state into a giant leviathan and enriched its cronies, while robbing everybody else, and it is perpetually teetering on the edge of a catastrophic final reckoning. PT, so how is it possible for America's trade deficit with China to be so gargantuan? By following the fake money, some semblance of an answer comes into focus. The use. Treasury borrows money into existence via budget deficits. Similarly, commercial banks borrow money into existence via fractional reserve banking. The Federal Reserve encourages the overissuance of credit by artificially suppressing interest rates for extended time periods, often a decade or more. This continuous flood of credit, the flip side of debt, finds its way into stocks, real estate, and foreign-made imported goods. Some of it even finds its way into the absurdity of 75-inch flat-screen televisions. Surplus trading partners, like China, then recycle the dollars back into U.S. Treasuries, thus, perpetuating greater debt creation, and an ever-expanding trade deficit. The trade deficit, you see, is a function of fake money and expansive fiscal and monetary policy. Without fake money, the trade deficit never could have blown out to today's extreme imbalance. Unfortunately, the economy is so dependent upon ever-expanding debt that all it takes is a minor pause, like in 2008, and the whole edifice is at risk of crashing down. So where does this all lead? Total U.S. credit market debt, the debt-laden U.S. economy cannot even withstand the tiniest pullback in credit growth without suffering a systemic crisis. PT, are you prepared for the end of fake money? Readers frequently write us to point out the dollar's unique role as the world's reserve currency. They highlight the need for massive quantities of dollars to provide the medium of exchange for global trade. Readers are also quick to bring up something called Trifon's Dilemma and reproach us for not mentioning it. According to an insight elaborated by Belgian-American economist Robert Trifon some 50 years ago, the U.S., as bearer of the world reserve currency, must supply the world with an abundance of dollar reserves. But, as a consequence, the U.S. must run a trade deficit. Specifically, by having the world reserve currency, the U.S. must import more than it exports. It must spend more than it earns. In other words, it must eventually go broke. Hence, the dilemma. Is Triffin's dilemma a fact? We don't know. But perhaps the mere mention of it inflates our IQ. Robert Triffin, the man who put the U.S. into the dilemma prison. Nobody asked him to do that, but he went and did it anyway. These days he's dead and the U.S. is still in his prison. P.T. What we do know is that readers who write to admonish our failure to mention Triffin's dilemma are also swift to use the term exorbitant privilege to describe the unique advantage the U.S. has as issuer of the world reserve currency. They even supply lengthy and convoluted arguments pleading their case. As far as we can follow, this exorbitant privilege affords the U.S. the unique opportunity to create money from nothing and trade it to foreign countries in exchange for real stuff. Somehow, according to this theory, the trade deficit can expand without limits forever and ever, and without consequence. This all sounds great, like having cake and then eating it too. Nonetheless, we remain unconvinced. There's an itch of suspicion we can't quite satisfy. Something tells us that fake money yields fake theories that attempt to offer some sort of academic justification for an economic cancer. We could always make a few colorful pictures and charts of the dilemma prison. With equations to boot. P.T. Moreover, we believe the jury's still out on the eternal preeminence of the dollar. Fake money requires an inordinate amount of misplaced confidence to perpetuate its charade. But confidence in the dollar, like Hollywood star power, can quickly fall out of favor. 
be it a trade war, a currency war, a fighting war, or the mass realization that the Federal Reserve has painted itself into a corner and has lost their ability to combat an episode of extreme inflation or deflation of its making, confidence in today's fake money will wane. It's already happening. Real money, the money of last resort, and the type of money that fulfills the four functions of money identified by Avens, is physical gold. Readers, whether they believe it or not, would be remiss not to hoard a little gold, or silver, bullion as we journey from summer into fall. Get ye bar before it flies away. P.T. There's doom and gloom out there, just yonder the horizon. The time to prepare for the end of fake money is now. Central banker lets slip that global financial reset is underway as governments prepare for collapse of current system. For anyone who does even a modicum of research, the 2008 financial crash was not just a cyclical bump in the credit cycle, but an actual death event for the entire financial system. And this is primarily why central banks like the Fed, ECB, and Bo have had to constantly fund their lift support patient with endless amounts of QE, 0% interest rates, and even negative rates. In fact, despite the reality of tens of trillions of dollars printed and monetized by the central banks over the past seven years in both the US and in Europe, most banks remain underfunded, and pretty much insolvent if they had to administer true accounting practices. Deutsche Bank is technically insolvent. Experts from CNBC. Since around 2013, Asian and Eurasian economies such as Russia, China, India, and even Kyrgyzstan have been preparing for a post-petrodollar world, and one no longer controlled by the Western central banks. And even in Europe, nations such as Germany, Austria, and the Netherlands have all done the unprecedented move of recalling their gold reserves back from the US into their own vaults. But while those who pay attention to the alternative financial media have heard numerous times that we are preparing for a great global financial and currency reset, only trickles of information has come from leaders on the reality of this paradigm shifts. Until now? On June 21st the head of the UK's Central Bank, Bank of England, gave a speech in which he emphasized that the global financial system is moving rapidly towards a new world order which in this case is political speak for the global currency reset. The race is definitely on as two will be dictating the terms of the reset. Everybody has their eyes on China and Russia, thinking they join forces to form the dominance in the global economy to push out the dollar and elevate China to world reserve currency status, or elevate a combination of China and Russia to world reserve currency status with the gold and or silver backing in this new monetary system perhaps even with the return to gold and silver via a Chinese gold-backed yuan and a Russian silver ruble. Well, it's not only the East that is actively working on the global reset. England seems to frantically be in the race as well. Yesterday, Bank of England Governor Mark Carney gave a speech, and it was basically all about the coming reset. That phrase that we all can't stand. The New World Order. Yup. It's coming. It's a very long, super boring speech, but I've read between the lines, and I want to show you some of the things he has said, so that you can come to your own conclusions as to what is going on. To me, it speaks to the end of the dollar-dominated world and the coming reset and reordering of the global monetary system. Here's some of the things he said in no particular order. Bold and red bold added by half dollar for emphasis. The bank recognizes that the new economy, a new world and new demographics demand a new financial system. While we prepare for great change, we will be guided by one constant, our mission to promote the good of the people we all serve. This infrastructure must be overhauled now that the economy is on the cusp of the fourth industrial revolution and our demographic challenges are intensifying. And rebalancing of the global order is proving as dramatic as it was in Montague Norman's time. Such profound changes demand a new finance. 
We now have a balance sheet fit for a new world order with greater reliance on markets and a wider range of reserve currencies. The average citizen will never receive warning from either governments or the financial powers unless they are able to read between the lines in speeches such as this one on what is being worked on and what is coming. Because all one has to do is remember back in 2008 when CNBC went out of their way to tell us how solvent and stable Bear Stearns was, only to see it vanish forever just four days later with Congress having to push through a bailout under the guise that this crisis could bring about the institution of martial law. Currency war can end global US dollar dominance and those who own gold have power the world is facing a currency war and the only hedge against the crash of the US dollar is real gold, a precious metal analyst has told Root with geopolitical power shifting from west to east, US dominance may be ending. One such sign is the recent repatriation of gold from the United States. Countries such as Turkey, Germany, the Netherlands have been moving the bullions home. The reason is the Cold War is over and countries don't see Russia as a threat anymore, says Claudio Grass, an independent precious metals advisor and Mises ambassador. Central banks moved their gold because they felt threatened by the USSR and saw the USA as their natural ally. The fact that central banks are repatriating their gold shows that this has changed. It also implies that they don't see Russia as a bigger threat than the USA any longer. Europe stands in the center of this geopolitical power shift and some countries obviously believe it's wise to store the gold in their home countries. He told Root the world has been living in crisis since 2008, while the currency war started even earlier, notes Grass. Central banks have been printing trillions of dollars out of thin air, while central banks are coordinating the debasing of currencies and pouring money into all kinds of financial assets, real estate and bonds. Nonetheless, it is obvious that the systematic problems are not solved, on the contrary, the risks became bigger and more fragile than a decade ago, said Grass. As you know more than 65% of all monetary reserves in the central banking system are held in the world currency reserve, which still is the use. Therefore, holding physical gold is definitely the best hedge against the crash of any paper currency, and therefore also against the crash of the use. The global debt has soared to $230 trillion as the global economy has got stuck in monopoly game system that is based on debt and financial leverage, the analyst notes. The last geopolitical shift that started with World War I and ended with World War II put the U.S. in this dominant position because they owned and stored 70% of the gold reserves of the free world. This was also the main reason why the U.S. became the world currency reserve. For the past 30 years we can witness another geopolitical power shift going from west to east. As you know, everything operates in cycles, Grass said. As the currency reset begins, get gold as it is, where the whole world is heading, this may be the most important commentary I've ever written. Here's why. For years, financial analysts have discussed what's called the Global Monetary Reset, or GMR. Expectations of a GMR stem from the fact that monetary policies around the world are unstable and unsustainable. Aftermath, Seven Secrets of Wealth Preservation in the Coming Chaos by James Rickards There is no anchor to the system. There is no limit on money printing. There is no limit on debt creation. Such a system grows exponentially based on the false belief that governments can spend as much as they want and central banks will pick up the tab or bail out the system as needed. Politicians love the system because they can buy votes from their citizens. Central bankers love the system because of the power and prestige it brings them. Citizens love the system because they get handouts, bailouts, pumped up asset values and other goodies seemingly for free. What's not to like? The problem, of course, is that the system is unstable and unsustainable. It's a huge inverted pyramid of promises poised on a small sliver of real money called gold. It's bound to tip over and come crashing down as it has many times in the past, 
from the jubilees of ancient Israel to the global financial crisis of 2008. The 2008 panic would have closed banks and capital markets globally but for tens of trillions of dollars of central bank intervention. That bailout money printing has still not been mopped up. The 2008 bailout has sown the seeds of the next crisis. Viewing this broadly, an objective analyst can see that a new system based on some hybrid of dollars, gold and the IMF's world money called Special Drawing Rights SDRS, is inevitable. This new system could even include an encrypted distributed ledger or blockchain, and might revert to fixed exchange rates instead of floating. The GMR would be a return to something like the old Bretton Woods system 1944 to 1973 but with 21st century characteristics and technology. This is what is meant by the global monetary reset. That much is clear. The open issues for students of the GMR are when it happens and how. There are two answers to the how part. It can either happen in a proactive way by convening a new global monetary conference similar to Bretton Woods 1944, the Plaza Accord 1985, or the Louvre Accord 1987. Or it can happen in a chaotic fashion in response to a new financial crisis, as occurred at the G20 Washington summit led by George Bush and Nicolas Sarkozy in November 2008. My estimate has always been that the GMR would be conducted in a panic due to the lack of leadership and foresight of the global monetary elites. The answer to the win part is necessarily uncertain, but given what we know about the dynamics of complex systems and the scaling metrics of the current international monetary regime, the best answer is probably soon. In a nutshell, a catastrophic collapse is coming, probably sooner than later and the result will be an entirely new international monetary system in which the dollar is dethroned as the world's leading reserve currency and something new is put in its place. That's the GMR. What if I told you the GMR already happened and no one noticed? Here I have to acknowledge that some of the information that follows was provided to me by a source. The work of this source is tentative and requires more independent research. Yet it looks solid enough right now to share with readers. I'll be writing more about this revelation in my new book, Aftermath, coming October 30th, 2018. You can pre-order a copy here. In Aftermath, I'll disclose more about the origin of this information. For now, I just want to be fair and acknowledge that it originated with an unsolicited research report sent to me from a correspondent named D.H. Bauer based in Switzerland. We'll call him D.H.B. for now. Let's start with a simple analysis we've all done ourselves and expand that analysis with information from D.H.B. Then I'll provide some conclusions that stem from this presentation. We all follow the price of gold. We think of gold as about $1,320 per ounce. We say it is up or down by $10 per ounce and so on. When we do this, we are really quoting a cross rate between US dollars used and one ounce of gold, gold. Let's call this cross rate used slash GLD. We also follow the cross rate between the US dollar and the Chinese yuan, KNI. That's the exchange rate between the currencies of the two largest economies in the world, which combine to produce almost 40% of global GDP. When China instituted a shock devaluation of their currency in August 2015, US stock markets fell 11% in three weeks, and it looked like there was no bottom. Then the Fed intervened with the delay of the liftoff in rate hikes from September to December 2015. China devalued again in December 2015, and U.S. stocks fell 11% again from January 1st to February 10th, 2016. It took the G20 Shanghai Accord in late February 2016 to put an end to Chinese shock devaluations. This recent history reveals that the U.S.-China cross rate is one of the most important metrics in world finance. Let's call this cross rate used slash KNI. Finally, if you're a geek like me, you take a look at the US dollar value of the SDR every day. It's not a secret. 
The IMF actually publishes that cross rate daily, found here. As of this writing, SDR1 equals USD 1.419, but that rate changes daily like any floating exchange rate. Let's call this cross rate SDR slash used. Now, you are recall the transitive law from middle school math. In short form it says, if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. In other words, if you have two equalities, you can substitute a factor from one for a factor from another and still end up with an equality. Here's where DHB's insight comes in. He took the known quantities of used slash GLD and SDR slash used and applied the transitive law to calculate SDR slash GLD. While I think about used slash GLD, used slash KNI and SDR slash used all the time, I have to admit I never thought much about SDR slash GLD. Why would I? I don't own any SDRS and I can't get my hands on any. The IMF only issues them to member countries, and they're traded among the members through a secret trading desk inside the IMF. If I want to buy gold, I use dollars. In China, they can buy gold with yuan. The idea of buying gold with SDRS may be off in the future, but there is no active gold market priced in SDRS today. Or is there? DHB took a look. What he found was shocking. It's summarized in this chart, source. DH Bauer the timeline along the horizontal x-axis runs from December 31, 2014 to March 31, 2018. The price line along the vertical y-axis is measured in units of dollars or SDRS depending on the data series. The units run from 700-1400. The red line is the dollar price per gold ounce used slash GLD. The dark blue line is the used slash GLD trend. The green line is the price per ounce of gold in SDRS, SDR slash GLD. The purple line is the SDR slash GLD trend. The black vertical line indicates the date, October 1st, 2016, that the IMF allowed the Chinese Yuan to join the basket used to determine the value of an SDR. The rest of the basket consists of dollars. Pounds sterling, euros and Japanese yen. Here's what DHB discovered. Before China joined the SDR, both the dollar price of gold and the SDR price of gold were volatile. After China joined the SDR, the dollar price of gold continued to be volatile, but the SDR price of gold exhibited much less volatility, especially after the first few months. Most importantly, the trend line of SDR slash GLD is a near perfect horizontal line. In short, world money has now been pegged to gold at a rate of SDR 900 equals 1 ounce of gold. It's a new gold standard using the IMF's world money. There's the GMR right in front of your eyes. It takes a while to sink in. Why did SDR slash GLD go from normal volatility to no volatility overnight? The straight line behavior of SDR slash GLD after the Chinese Yuan joined the SDR is impossible without some kind of intervention or manipulation. The odds of this happening randomly are infinitesimal. The SDR slash GLD horizontal trend line after October 1, 2016, is an example of what statisticians call odor aggression. This only appears if there is a recursive function, a feedback loop, or manipulation, or if it's presented as a fraud. This is how Harry Markopolo spotted the Bernie Madoff fraud. Madoff's returns were too steady and consistent to be real given the volatile nature of capital markets. In the case of SDR slash GLD, we can rule out a recursive function, because gold trades in a relatively free market determined by supply and demand. We can rule out randomness, statistically impossible, and fraud. The data come from public sources. No one is making them up. That leaves manipulation as the only possible explanation. How would you conduct such a manipulation, and who's behind it? To peg across rate, in this case SDR slash GLD, you need a large floating supply of both components or a printing press to make as much as you need. 
Basically, you conduct open market operations. If the SDR price of gold rises above SDR 900, you sell gold and buy SDRS or the currency basket. If the SDR price of gold sinks below SDR 900, you buy gold and sell SDRS or the currency basket. By monitoring markets and intervening continually with open market operations in gold and currencies, you can maintain the peg. There are only four parties in the world who could conduct such a manipulation, the U.S. Treasury, the ECB, the Chinese State Administration of Foreign Exchange, SAFE, and the IMF itself. These are the only entities with enough gold on SDRS to be able to conduct the open market operations needed to peg the price. We can eliminate the U.S. Treasury and ECB as suspects. That's because they are relatively transparent about their total gold holdings foreign exchange reserves and the SDR component of their reserves. For the ECB we look at the large members such as Germany and France for the data. If either one were conducting open market operations, there would be fluctuations in holdings of gold on SDR component currencies that would appear in official reports. No such fluctuations appear, so they're off the list. That leaves SAFE and the IMF. Both are not transparent. China has about 2,000 tons of gold, probably much more, but they don't disclose the excess and has been acquiring SDRS in secondary market trading in addition to official allocations to IMF members. The IMF has about 1,000 tons of gold and can print all the SDRS it wants with its SDR printing press. The IMF also makes loans and receives principal and interest in SDRS. The SDRS can be traded through the IMF's secret trading desk. Even now, the IMF is preparing to bail out Argentina. When that happens, the IMF loans will be in SDRS. Argentina needs dollars to defend its currency, so they'll have to swap their new SDRS for dollars. China will be a willing swap counterparty through the IMF's secret trading desk. That's how China acquires more SDRS than its IMF allocation permits. Those extra SDRS are crucial to China's ability to conduct open market operations in gold and SDRS. The gold can be traded secretly through the Bank for International Settlements, BIS, which traded Nazi gold in the Second World War. The BIS is super secret and is controlled by the same people who control the IMF. China can also conduct gold purchases and sales for yuan or dollars on the open market in Shanghai and London and separately buy or sell SDRS for dollars or yuan. China can also buy or sell the SDR basket currency separately as a synthetic SDR to manipulate the price of the actual SDR. This kind of intervention by China to maintain the SDR slash GLD peg might also explain the mysterious gold slams we see in COMEX gold futures trading with regularity. Analysts have speculated for years that China was acquiring gold in anticipation of a new gold-backed yuan. I always disputed that idea because China does not have a good rule of law. The yuan lacks the kind of deep liquid bond markets primary dealers, repo facilities, futures contracts and other legal infrastructure needed to be a major reserve currency with or without gold backing. The yuan is a decade or more from becoming a major reserve currency, but the SDR is an ideal vehicle for a gold-backed currency because it has the support of every major economic power on earth through the IMF. The bottom line is that China has now pegged the SDR to gold. This is highly ironic, because when the SDR was created in 1969 it was originally pegged to gold and defined as a weight in gold, SDR 1 equals 0 0.88867 grams of gold. That peg was abandoned soon after, even as the dollar peg, 1 US dollar equals 1 35th th ounce of gold, was also abandoned. Since this SDR peg to gold is informal, it can be abandoned at any time. It probably will be abandoned because the Chinese sponsors of the peg have ignored the lessons of 1925 when the UK returned sterling to the gold standard at the wrong price. The result was catastrophic deflation that presaged the Great Depression. 
The Chinese peg of SDR 900 is far too cheap to be sustainable given the scarce supply of gold and the growing supply of SDRS. More to the point, the IMF will print trillions of SDRS in the next global financial crisis, which will prove highly inflationary. Still, this is a historic development, and we'll be watching it closely in Rickard's Gold Speculator. Even if the peg is unsustainable in the long run, it's a clear short-run signal that China is betting on the SDR in gold, not the yuan or the dollar. My advice under these circumstances is simple. Dump dollars, yuan and SDRS if you have any, and get gold. That's where the whole world is heading.